hundred years ago, only 20% of the world lived in urban areas. But now, city dwellers make up the majority of the world's population. And that's come with a number of problems. We have more pollution in our source waters and disappearing wetlands. Intense development is degrading our drinking water. And there's more pressure on aging urban water, sewage and stormwater systems. That's where Ryerson Urban Water comes in. Ryerson Urban Water is finding solutions to urban water challenges of the 21st century. Located in Canada's largest city, our multidisciplinary group of researchers focuses on three major areas. We partner with industry to find cost-effective and viable solutions to urban water challenges. We help develop policy to conserve and protect our water supplies, and we educate the public about the value of water. Natural vegetation helps regulate temperature, manage water flow, and filter pollution. Green roofs reintroduce this natural vegetation into the urban environment. 2003, 2004, the city began to start looking at possibilities, whether should they should have green roofs on city buildings or not. Ryerson University took it upon itself to show to the community that they were stewards of the environment and installed a green roof on this building. And the city, based on that information, developed the policy. Now that we have the policy in place, every new building of a certain type, like residential, institutional, commercial, that goes up in the city of Toronto, they are required to put a green roof on the building. We got to start thinking about the standards of the green roof. What gets put up on the roof? Do they actually meet the requirements? Do they actually achieve those kinds of things? Are there new evolving technologies that help better those things that we wanted the green roofs to do? That's what we are focusing on right now. Contaminants are running off the urban landscape and entering our natural water sources. By combining an old concept with a new approach, we can better identify contaminants before they become a problem. In the last three decades, we've gone to analyzing the water chemically. This is a problem because, of course, it's expensive. So what we have reintroduced in our lab is the idea of a canary in a coal mine. So we use anywhere from the smallest of the food web, algae, for example, and we take a look at water column zooplankton. These are invertebrates without a backbone. And eventually, of course, we ask the fish, are they impacted as well? And what we do is we're looking for a consistent answer through all aspects of those organisms. And when they give it to us, we actually know we have a severe problem with the water. Through our research, what we wish to accomplish is a sustainable urban water cycle so that Torontonians have clean, potable drinking water and that manufacturing has a cost-effective strategy going forward into the future. In 2013, the City of Toronto came to a standstill when more than a month's worth of rain fell in two hours. Damage was estimated at close to a billion dollars. To prevent future damage to the urban environment, we're researching how to improve the design and use of deep tunnels to alleviate flooding. We believe deep tunnel will solve our problem, but unfortunately, the hydraulic situation may actually limit the flow going into it. So that's why our research is built on analyzing this dynamic situation of storm and also the inflow into those deep tunnels, how they interact so that we can capture all the flow. When you spend billions of dollars in deep tunnel and thinking they work, but all of a sudden somebody is still flooded, then it's not going to be good to the public and also to the taxpayer who spend billions of dollars. Rice and urban water goes beyond applied research and policy change. Through innovative, hands-on education to elementary, high schools and universities, we're creating a profound impact on the public awareness around water. Ryerson was the first university in North America to host the Wet Skills, and we brought together Canadian university students, American university students, and students from the Netherlands to look at real-world problems that were brought to us by industry partners. And then the students in teams came up with solutions for those problems. So not only has there been pedagogical success, but as well, these solutions are actually moving forward within the water industry. Working with Ryzen Urban Water is good for students, Canadian students and Dutch students. It's good for business, Canadian and Dutch business, and it's a government-to-government -government aspect behind it. So all those aspects that the Dutch consulate here is working on come together in our cooperation with Ryzen Urban Water. 
Together with Ryerson Urban Water, you can help solve the water issues in our urban areas. You can help build more environmentally friendly and effective cities.